You're listening to the Sil80 Mania podcast. I'm your host, Benson Sue, and thank you for joining us for episode seven. I'm joined by my side, my trusty co host and wife, Nadine Sue. Hey, babe. Hey, guys. Hey, honey bunny. Hey, honey bunny. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're honey bunny. What? You're honey bunny, too. No, you got to call me something else. Um, something nicer. Hot stuff? I don't know. No. Honey butt? Honey butt? <laughs> I'll take no. Don't call me. No, honey you butt. don't get a choice. <laughs> you had honey buns. Now, now you asked for it. I'm gonna come up with something <laughs> real good. Whatever. <laughs> um, and as always, we have our trusty sound engineer, Mark Mondoy. What's up, Mark? You. And you forgot to add. It's Mark's birthday. Yay! Yay! Happy, Happy birthday, Mark! Thank you so much. As you guys can see behind us, yes. we are in celebration of Sir Mark's birthday. How are you feeling today, Mark? Cool. <laughs> feeling 21? Uh, yeah, the big 4 I mean, the oh, 4 snap. 6 4 so, 4 6 4 He 6. said his age on air. I love it. Well, you know, I think I think us guys, we're not like that about our age. It's not embarrassing or, you know. I mean, once the hair was going, didn't matter how, like, That's the right. number. That's right. <laughs> bald at 40, bald at 50, what's the difference? Age is nothing but a number. That's right. That's oh right. I don't, I don't feel 40 to you, so... And Mark, you no. and I were talking about this earlier. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't... I don't. I don't feel my age. So like, I'm healthy still. I'm. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah. No complaints. Well, I sure feel 21. So we're good. Yeah. I'm gonna hit, <laughs> gonna hit the club. Do you feel 21? I do. I don't feel 21. You make but me I don't feel, feel 21, baby. Alive. It's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, just how like how you feel about your your own age. Um, it it comes off. I think like sometimes, yeah. you know, we have kids, so we we pick up our kids from school and we see all the and, old and we parents. see other parents. Right. And they, <laughs> they can't be too far off in age from yeah. Nadine and myself. Yeah. Right. But they dress like they're old. Yeah. So they just, you know, I don't know. We're not kidding to our demographic right now. So that yeah. OK. No. Anyway, <laughs> that's fine. So but Mark, I want to thank you for coming in on your birthday to, mm-hmm. of all days to do this. I know, you know, you had to come in early. Well, I mean, it's, and then it's he the even best. Get in. It's the best birthday because of our guests, so that's like no problem. Oh, all. That's our guest so is sweet. pretty awesome today. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, I love it. Tell me about the guest today. Um, wait, before we go to on to our guest. Oh, since it's Mark's birthday. Oh yes, yes, yes. I want to give Mark some flowers. Mm. I want to get it on. I want to get it on wax. You know, let's that, wrap those flowers up. Yeah. So, Mark, uh, you, you are one of my oldest friends. And we met like a long... Like literally now? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Old, yeah. Okay. Um, you're not the oldest, but, um, you know, we met a long time ago on AOL Instant Messenger. On dial-up, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I was, I was on Ethernet. I was at work. Oh, I was supposed okay. to be working, but... Anyway. Oh. I remember chatting with you a lot on, while I was at work. Um, we were early, like, S13 guys. We were mm-hmm. fellow S13 guys mm-hmm. who also, like, uh, were really interested in drifting and there wasn't a lot of people that knew about drifting back then but um you know you're one of my closest friends um you are someone that i can always depend on and you're always uh you're always so generous with your time um and that and that is before this podcast uh you you know you've helped us so many times with things with our cars you help you you spent days on end helping me install wood flooring in our house <laughs> that took um, weeks by I mean, the way <laughs> I, I, just, I can i can remember all of these times you've helped me with my car when i was at formula d you were helping me you know as a, a pit crew guy um you just always have been really supportive and um just an all-around good guy and i wanted to thank you for your friendship after all these years um and just uh just being someone in my life that I can always depend on. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it goes both ways. Here. Like, you know, uh, I'm pretty loyal to my friends. I don't have a lot of them, but that's because like, kind of the way I live my life is just, you know, uh, at the end of the day, like the people you surround yourself with is like, you know, makes everything fun, right? So it's it's kind of no question to help out when I can and just do what I can. It's, you know give back yeah thank you and it's funny you use that that it's not funny but 
you know, you use that term loyalty. And that is, that is like the number one thing I think of when I think of you. You are very loyal and uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. I just want to surround my life with good people and like what comes with that is just helping out when I can. Yep. We, we all want that. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Yeah. Thank happy, you. Thank happy, you. happy birthday. Yes. From the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate you. Getting all sappy here on Getting the podcast. All sappy. This podcast is all Wipe about sappy. Wipe the tears. Wipe the tears away. That's what happens when we miss a month. <laughs> yes. Get all emotional. Get all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you, man. <laughs> I'm in the field. We missed you, listeners. Yes. 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 Definitely. And I'm, guys, we are back from our one month hiatus. That's right. It's been a really long time. It was a nice break, though. I, I needed it, especially since for me, work got really crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was not happy that we missed a month, but at the same time, as I was going through my 12-hour work days at work, I was mm. like, man, I'm glad I'm not having to think about this right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But so. we're we're back, and, and we didn't have a hiatus because we were lazy or busy. It was just scheduling, and we it were waiting. scheduling this very special yes. guest today. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, he's just, he's a very busy guy. And he doesn't, yeah. you know, he's got a family who, you know, rightfully so, he puts like on super high priority in his life. And when it comes to outside things, nothing gets in the way of his family time. Yeah. So I respect that. And um, so he was able to make some time for us during his lunch break of all times. He skipped mm -hmm. his lunch so that mm -hmm. he could do this interview. Um, in the car, in the hot car. That's so right. In the car, that's, that's in, we're the, gonna in do the parking today. lot. Yep. So, um, and, you know, just scheduling all of it, it was really tough. And we actually, we tried to record last last week mm -hmm. and it didn't work because there was a power outage so you know i took ha half a day off today to get this recording done but it's all worth it to talk to the infamous toshiki yoshioka yes tell me more about him why why did you add him to the list well okay so i was i was mm -hmm. fortunate enough to meet him as a judge at the very first final bout. Um, we were both judges. We were all judges, him, myself, and Rob Ryder. And, um, you know, he, he had been living in the U.S. for several years before that, and I just never had the opportunity to meet him. And being able to, you know, as a judge, I don't know, a lot of people aren't judges, so they don't have this experience. But as a judge, you're kind of isolated from everything that's going on in the event. Right. Because you, you have a job to do when you're there. And so, uh, you know, you can't mingle and socialize with a lot of people like as if you were a driver. And so we spent a whole weekend together, kind of isolated, um, getting to know each other. And at first, uh, you know, y Yoshi is we call him Yoshi, um, by the way. And it, it is always awkward, awkward for me to say that because. I respect him so much and I just want to call him like, you know, Yoshioka-san. Mm -hmm. But, uh, he, you know, he insists I call him Yoshi. So we're, we're calling him Yoshi on this podcast. Um, he was very shy at first and it was hard to break through that wall. And But being able to spend that weekend with him, you know, I was able to break through the wall and we we really enjoyed each other's company. And so, you know, there's that friendship there. Um, and then... You know, thinking about this podcast, you know, who else do we know that's out there that has been involved in drifting before D1 and then involved in drifting in D1 during, you know, the early years of D1 and actually be, was successful in it and then drove Formula D when drifting came to the U.S. and had su some success in Formula D and can speak English. Mm. But so. more than that, like even <clears throat> before you met him at Formula, I mean, a uh, final bout, mm -hmm. you know, we all know knew Yoshioka as a driver in D1 and mm -hmm. how inspirational he was because of being a Hachidoku driver, yes. being, being the kind of perpetual underdog. Yeah. He's, and anyone, I, any, any Hachidoku driver that finds success is always going to be someone put on a pedestal because you know what they have to overcome to find success. And just, kind of Hachiroku 
drivers, especially in D1, are just they've got a they've all got unique personalities. They're、mm-hmm. all a little bit crazy. They're all a little bit off, and something about that just makes them way more interesting. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and I want to ask him some questions too, like about Japan, right? Because I don't know what things were like over there, and I and the people like that he was around. Like I always wonder, like behind the curtain, how things are、mm-hmm. really, because all we know is like what we saw on option video,、right. and that's not the truth. That's just a <laughs> freaking show. That's what they、right? want to show. That's、right. what they want us to know. So, so I'm excited. Oh yeah. So, without further ado. Let's do our formal introduction of our guest today. Are we ready? <laughs> Toshiki Yoshioka currently lives in Detroit, Michigan. He's been drifting since 1996 and drove D1GP's inaugural year in 2002 and every year after till 2008. Yoshioka has since moved here to the USA, competed in Formula Drift, Pikes Peak Hill Climb. And obtained a solid job at Toyota North America. He is one of the only drivers to win both a round of D1GP and Formula D. He's professionally competed driving an AE86 Corolla, Subaru BRZ, S15, S13, and a Lexus SC430. He's driven for teams both in Japan and America, including Rupi, RSR, GTNet, Tomei, Apex, Retax. Drift speed, and was a privateer as well. So, Mr. Toshiki Yoshioka, welcome to the show. Hi, Toshi. How are you today? Thanks for coming on with us at your lunch hour. I'm good. Yeah, very good. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's great seeing you, Yoshi. Yeah, it's good to see yeah, you. It's been, it's been oh, oh wow, seven years. I think、oh, so.、No. Seven years. Somewhere around that, I don't know the exact. But <laughs> I don't it's remember. It's been a really long time. I don't remember when the last time、yeah. I saw you, but it's good to see your face. Thank you for giving us the honor of being on our podcast today. We are all huge fans of you, and we have so many questions. But we're gonna keep it concise.、Mm-hmm. But we got a lot of questions for you. So are you ready, like, to get this started? <laughs> uh, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> okay, let's start the grilling. Okay. <laughs> okay, so、um, what I want to know is how did you get into drifting? When was、uh, it, and how did you get into it? I don't remember the year, but、uh, it was I was eighteen. So about wow, it's pretty long time. It's、uh, now I'm a forty-five. So forty-five minus eighteen. Yeah, twenty-seven <laughs> years ago. Wow, almost thirty、oh, wow. years ago. Yeah.、Oh, wow. You never. You haven't <laughs> yeah, done that so, math. Wow. <laughs> no, I. Yeah, I used to do the like a、uh, motorcycle racing.、Oh. It's not racing, but、uh, I ro- I rode the motorcycles on the toge. You know, same、okay. thing. You know, wear the leather leather suits and then the replica, the motorcycle, and I thought that times I wanted to keep doing. For my life, and then I was gonna buy a, you know, like a, like a station wagon or like a pickup truck to, the carry around, you know, the my, carry around my the motorcycle to the <laughs> truck, to you know、yeah. pursue my、uh, motorcycle racing stuff. Yeah, but somehow I went to、uh, the the toge, and I hope you guys understand the toge. Yes, of course. Audience understand, course. but.、Uh, <laughs> yeah, I went to the toge with uh, you know, friends. In the that was the other Saturday night. You know, it's the hottest hottest night in the week. So we we went to the toge with a motorcycle friends, and we saw our drifting cars going by us sideways. That's like you know, like so much impressed me. Yeah. Then, oh, we we talked to each other, and then you know we faced each other to the friends, and hey, we want to do that. <laughs> then, yeah, and then my friends, the best friend, he bought the RX seven. Then w- which which one? Right, it's FC? no no no, yeah FC. And we we grew up in Hiroshima, so the Mazda is more you know, like convenient. Okay, for us and popular car. So he got a FC. Then all right, I have no way to stop. You know, like pursuing the drifting, then 
All right, I, I'll I'll buy the FC. Then I bought the FC. Oh, <laughs> your first car was <laughs> the FC. Started. Okay. Yeah, FC. So this was 1996. <sighs> I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. 19. No, I had a motorcycle. 19. 90. Three, no, ninety four. Okay, that's the NSR. I got, I got Honda NSR,、oh. NSR, the ninety, yeah, nineteen ninety four. Okay, so nineteen one 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 Saturday night in the nineteen ninety four, that's that's the night impressed me、okay. and then changed change my life. Okay, so yeah, so you bought an FC with、mm. your、uh, your friend who also bought an FC. Yeah, and、uh, did you guys start Team Bros Running Crazies together? Oh no. Okay, this is a different friend. Yeah, the that times I I don't think we established any teams, but、okay. uh, not just only one friends. We have a、uh, four four friends together, and they all have our FC. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, blue, black, white, and pink. I don't know who got a pink one, so, but、uh, they got pink one. <laughs> what?、Well, uh, so、um, take us back. So、um, what? A lot of people ask me. A lot of the listeners to this podcast, they want to know. You know, for me, because I was、uh, one, or you know, we were all、um, kind of the early drifters in the U.S., and they always want to、mm-hmm. know what was it like back then, because it was so different when we first started compared to now, and、mm-hmm. um, so what I think a lot of people don't know is what was it like. Back then, when you were starting drifting in Japan, oh, it's it's big different, you know. Like,、uh, of course, we don't make any smoke. Yeah, <laughs> just, just just you know the noise. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, and then the angle was very shallow, you know.、We、did you have on the more speed? Did you have、yeah. modifications to make more angle then, or is completely no. stock? No, completely stock. Okay, only the only the LSD on the back. Okay. Then cut cut the springs, you know. Yeah. We didn't install the coilover too, so just you know we were poor,、yes. poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Having the FC was expensive that time. Yeah, that is really expensive to start drifting. And that's not an easy car、yeah. <laughs> to drift off the lot either, right? That that's. A...、Uh, oh, FC. I don't know. I, I don't think it's easy easiest car, but、uh, yeah. I I don't know. I didn't know that the other car was so.、Mm. Only I I know is FC. Okay, and so、yeah. back then,、uh, was was there any drifting on、uh, any circuits, or was it all street racing?、Uh, that time, all street racing. Okay, so all street every night. I mean,、uh, every weekend, street. <laughs> so, so no one was able to drift on a circuit back then. I don't think so. Okay, no. How about the police? Like, were were you? Did they know? Because I mean, I feel like that's a lot of. If it's every night, they have to catch on. Like, did the police? Yeah, 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 yeah. Every every weekend, we have our <laughs> using the walkie-talkie, and then if the police show up, then we we just run away. Yeah, but in Japan,、yeah. like, do they get do they bust you really bad? Like the police, are they really strict? Oh, police! Police is very gentle. They don't do it. <laughs> oh, they, you know? but uh, m- more scary is yeah the gangsters around oh, us. Oh, yeah. So, like uh. The, it's a it's a mountains and then de- down there some gang t- gangsters live there. Then when they, you know, when they get mad from the other tires noise and then you know so loud that then then come with a、uh, you know like they don't have a gun you know Japan is a pretty safe so no gun, but、uh, they they brought some、uh, you know sticks or a golf club and stuff. Yeah. Then yeah. Come to our parking lot and then destroy our car.、Uh, you know? Oh my gosh, that's、yeah. crazy! So that's the scare part. So one day I was changing the tires on the parking lot, then the gangster show up with a golf club,、oh. and then、oh. <laughs> a friend, friend, and my friend and I was oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> then we just jump on the car and then you know tight. Only the two lug nuts. <laughs> yeah, only two. But still, With by hands. Yeah, by hands, and then no, a little bit, little bit hand tight. Okay. But, yeah, jump on the car with the girlfriend, and then just drive. You know. Yeah, yeah. Drive, oh my god. Drive straight, 
to them and try to, you know, run over them. Oh, what? I mean, I mean, to the scare them, right? Yeah. Because they scare me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I back, if we scare them, then, okay, of course they, you know, step back. Yeah. Of course, because it's car. Car yeah. versus golf club. It's <laughs> more stronger than golf club. That's, that's rare racing <laughs> saved your life. So, yeah, that, yeah, that time I was lucky then. I had a no zero scratch on my car. Then wow. Just, nice. you know, run away from them. Yoshi, you're, you're a little bit of a gangster yourself to do no, something no, like no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't I have done that. Yeah. I would have ran I'm away. So, so shy. <laughs> 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 no, no, maybe because now I have a no hair, but that time is, you know, I, I, oh, I, I know. know. When you have more hair, you're more brave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm your yeah, no hair that... brother. I understand. <laughs> yeah. That was the other, my, uh, you know, like, uh, drifting life in back in the day. Yeah. Things were a lot different back then. Yeah. So, um, so can you tell us about, I mentioned your, your drift team earlier, bros running crazies. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so the one of the, my friends who have a FC, he moved to uh, the, it's still the same, the Hiroshima prefecture, but uh, he moved to up north in the Hiroshima. Then he met with uh, Bros Running Crazies. Then the, he joined the team. Then there, that times the, the Bihoku circuit is opened up for the drifting. So that teams usually go to the circuit for the drifting. Then he went with them. Then I we were invited from uh, them for the their truck day. Then we went there. Then that time the bros running crazies was their skills way too higher, way too high, much more than us. So I was I was very shocked, you know. Then maybe. Two years later, when I got the Corolla, then the team leader of the BRC asked me to join. Or maybe I asked, hey, can we join like that? Then we join with the team. Then, then the leader, him and I, you know, like a hopping, hops around the, the Barrel magazine, the competitions mm -hmm. in the all all over the Japan. So, so yeah, that's the how I started with the team. How did uh? Wh why did you go to Hachiroku from FC? Oh, so the the mountains I grew up with. They're like a, it's a very good Hachiroku driver. So you know. He, he his style was like he put uh, like a towels on the yes. uh, head yes and then open up the other roll down the both window what's the uh, two door coupe the eleven okay then straight mafra no no resonators yeah. nothing yeah then crazy nice NA sound uh, echoing in the mountains was so nice and his skill was so great yeah so fast very good and yeah load up his t-shirts right here to me it's so cool <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right fc is too fancy maybe i want to be like more like a man mm. so, <laughs> wow that's how you know made me to buy uh the corolla interesting okay. i've never heard anyone say that like i want to be more like a man so i'm gonna get in 86 wow yeah because because 86 is a uh, no power sharing yeah you yeah. have to have a good muscle and, yeah and good skill yeah 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 that's awesome so, what mountains were these the it's called the green line and where is that what prefecture uh hiroshima okay and fukuyama city oh no, yeah now the toge is closed oh uh, i see it's still open for the public, but uh, the parking lot is they closed. So you, you guys messed no, it up. No more yeah, no more gathering, and the speed bump is always everywhere. Oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, everywhere. They got smart. 
So, so Yoshi, when did you realize that uh, you, you know, at one point you were the youngest, one, one of the youngest guys in team in BRC and then yeah. uh, you started getting better. And when did you realize that you were one of the best ones or maybe the best, best driver in BRC? I don't know. I, I, I still don't think uh, I am a uh, best drivers in mm. the BRC. Maybe, you know, the people think I'm a best, but uh, I was just lucky, you know, mm. good timing to get into the D1 and those competitions. Right. Did your teammates, so, speaking of D1, did your, did your teammates join or try and drive D1 with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He did. The leader, he did. But uh, he was the other year behind. So the we went to our same, uh, like, a, what, driver's search event. Mm -hmm. Then I got a picked, but uh, he wasn't. So How'd he that... couldn't get into the events that time, same time. How did that feel? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell us, so they did D1 driver search just like they did over here. Um, you did yes. the, You were there in the very first year of D1, right? Yes, 2002. Uh, how did you find out that D1 was happening? Oh, the 2001, they started the D1, but uh, it's a little bit, you know, uh, how do I say? Uh, extended event from... Uh, Ikaten. Okay. So uh, video option actually to pick the drivers from the Ikaten to start the D1 Grand Prix. Okay. So only the first years was like a selected driver, which the drivers must have experience in the Ikaten. And then I, d I didn't. So they didn't even know my name. Yeah. So I wasn't picked. Of course, they don't know me. Okay. So since you were not, not able to get in through Ikaten, then yeah. uh, you were able to get in through a driver search instead? Yes. The, fortunately, I got the first event was the Bihoku in the 2002. Then the right before the qualify day, so they spent the two hours for the driver search. So I had the information from... Uh, video option i i called the video options many times before the uh 2002 d1 starts then they said okay uh driver search event on the bihoku right before the qualify yeah so then i i made the entry then i register the driver search okay so when you first but, uh, when yeah. you first started the very first season of d1 that you were in yeah. you were a privateer Yes, um, private year. And I think, so that was the first season, I mean, that was the first season of professional drifting. It was also mm -hmm. when we started seeing some drivers like uh, Taniguchi, where they were, mm -hmm. they were um, fully sponsored. Yes. Um, what was it like for you to be a privateer while you, while seeing other people getting, you know, just... Uh, jumping in a, into a car that was fully sponsored by a company. Oh, I thought that was that was very you know that I, I when I see the Taniguchi and the Yoichi's who drove the, the Apex and yes. uh, I thought it's full sponsorship is oh wow that's great uh, you know pro drivers maybe they get paid and uh, you know things it's pretty nice but. Uh, I wasn't like that level, and then, mm. but uh, that times I still have a confidence that I can, you know, my cars should be or my drifting is still competitive with them. So that's uh, yeah. So so when you first started, see from from all of us who watched you guys from the USA, mm -hmm. we we didn't we could not see that so. Were you younger than a lot of the other drivers in D1? Yeah, yeah. So so we didn't know that. We 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 couldn't tell that there that you were much younger, that you had less experience, and maybe there was a skill gap between mm -hmm. maybe like you and Taniguchi or uh Imamura, 
right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We all thought you guys were all amazing. Yep. So, <laughs> uh, so it's interesting to hear you say when you first started, uh, you felt like you weren't at that skill level, but still co- competitive. Yeah, I, I don't know the skill level itself. Maybe I don't know the. I didn't think my skill level. I mean, drifting skill level is not uh, lower than the Imamura. Mm. But uh, he has a good name. I mean, a big name, and then maybe probably he has uh, more experience with the other cars. Mm. So maybe his skill level is maybe a little bit more than us based on the experience. Okay. Okay. And yeah, but uh, yeah, that times, you know, after the driver search, I qualified and then get into the main competitions. I finished with a seventh place, which is higher than the Taniguchi and the Imamura. Mm. And I got a, you know, like a seed driver. Oh, okay. Top 10 nice. Yeah. So, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Next, next event, they waived my uh, Your... qualify. Nice. So, so yeah. you, okay. So you, you jumped into from an FC to a Hachiroku because mm-hmm. you felt like it would make you more of a man. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you go into D1 and then yeah. so you have a car that is low power, is older than a lot of the cars that yeah. were there. Um, yeah. What was it like trying to compete against these people? Some people who you thought their skill level was higher, they were fully mm. sponsored they have newer cars more horsepower what what was that like oh that yeah uh you know the it's that was yeah 2002 yeah. which is uh 20 years ago yeah <laughs> so 20 years ago there even the hks the sr engines mm. i think it's very make a uh, 400 or 450 horsepower yeah not even so. max got to uh, mm-hmm. 500 yeah mm. And then power weight ratio is not so bad compared mm. to the Servius versus my Corolla. Right. And and especially on the you know like a small the small race truck, not like a big bank in the mm. house in there or yeah. like a long Atlanta right. like that. So I don't think the other any advantage on Silvius that time mm. Mm. so you yeah. felt you felt like uh, you didn't regret going to Hachiroku and you felt mm. like it was still a competitive car yeah that's cool and now it's time for our sponsor break today's episode is sponsored by Apex USA Apex was founded in 1992 in Japan. They've become a staple name in the import aftermarket industry. Toshi Hayama, a guest on episode 6, founded Apex USA back in 1996. Apex is the originator of the angled N1 muffler and the Power FC ECU system, both of which Benson and I personally have used on our drift cars. And our guest today, Toshiki Yoshioka, drove the Apex SC430 in Formula Drift. So, honey buns, why don't you tell us what Apex is gifting our dear giveaway winners? We got some good ones this time. We have an Apex container box, which Nadine is in love with. We have like five of them in our garage, and I'll let her talk about that a little bit. And we have an Apex sweatshirt, and we also have a Nobori flag, which I know all of you are dying to get your hands on. Yeah, and I love the container box because it's like this. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the Apex container box folds flat. It's made of plastic and it has their logos all over it. And it has like a really cool lid that kind of opens. I don't know. It just it's really cool. And I put it in my car. I put it at my photo studio and like it's just really cute to hold things and then it looks pretty dope so yeah it's, it says apex on it so you know you can't go wrong with that but also <laughs> you know it's cool because it's collapsible so when you're not using it it doesn't take up any space and you know you can put whatever you want in it. you can put your spare diff that you're bringing to the track or you can put 
your cheeseburgers or whatever you want. <laughs> cheeseburger box. Okay. So I would say that the Apex cheeseburger box is like the grand prize for sure. And um, I'm just excited to give these away. And we will be giving these away on Instagram a little while after this episode drops. And you can visit Apex's website at apexi-usa.com and on Instagram, they're at apexiusa. And guys, let's get back to the grilling. And you mentioned, um, you know, lower speed tracks like Bihoku, right? So mm -hmm. um, we, we all watched from the other side of the world where you guys went from these small drift tracks, like mm -hmm. like Bihoku, um, Sekia Hills, like Sekia Hills, yeah. And then um, you know entries were around like sixty miles per hour, right? Not that not that fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and then all of a sudden we saw um, D one started incorporating real race tracks th that mm -hmm. you know maybe are world famous or famous in Japan for for mm -hmm. grip driving. And mm -hmm. um and then and then drifting speeds got way faster, like one hundred yes. miles per hour. Yes. Did D one tell you that it was going to start becoming faster? Or um, you know, how did you find out that oh now drifting is gonna change a lot? Oh, I think because of the other D one wants to make uh uh more popular the motorsports to the you know like people so the listener i mean the audience so the small trucks have a small stand so only oh. you know like a capacity yeah. of the other the gallery i mean attendees yeah. is very small yeah so, i remember sometimes they're sitting on the grass they don't even have yeah, a yeah. seat that that's why they start using the other national like a bigger race truck so they can they can have more people's right yeah so get more popular yeah that's how how they start they don't they don't i don't think they care about the speed they just Re oh uh, it was all about the yeah. fans the yeah all about the fans oh, yes oh okay so if the bihoku if, if the bihoku can you know like a uh, carry like a uh, hundred thousand people then yeah, <laughs> yeah still doing oh, okay. the bihoku maybe oh okay so but before you guys went to these high speed tracks yeah. Uh, were were you already? Did you already have experience drifting at those speeds? No. So, <laughs> so the first time you drifted at those speeds was during practice for that yeah. for those events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what what do you remember? Um. Uh. Like, did you when you guys did the first practice? I don't know what the first high speed track was, but Autopolis maybe was it Autopolis? Uh, uh, fastest one was at Scuba. So, oh, that's right. Oh, okay, that's right. Scuba. How fast was Scuba? It was Scuba. Scuba is still third gear, it's not yeah. fourth yeah. gear. Yeah. So pretty much similar as a uh, Bihoku, but a little bit longer. You know, straight pull. So Scuba was maybe a stepping stone. So it's faster yeah. than the smaller tracks, but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a hundred miles per hour. No. So, what was the first time you saw someone drifting that fast, like really, really fast? Uh, and uh, I think it was the the autopolis. Okay. Which is uh, my uh, the background pictures. <laughs> it's the autopolis. Yes. I won this truck. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. So we'll yeah, the, we'll, it, we'll get into that. But yeah, entry was like one hundred ninety kilometer per hour. Mm. So it's more than one hundred miles per hour. Yes. Oh my gosh. So and, fifth gear, fifth gear, and I think like seven thousand RPM on the engine. What what was? Ev oh my gosh! Yeah, that's, you know, good. <laughs> that's almost red line. Yeah, yeah, almost red line. Almost red line top gear. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. So yeah, top gear. So um, what was everyone feeling like before that event, knowing that it was going to be really fast? And, um, and people didn't really drift that fast before, so they didn't know, you know. Yeah, we didn't know, but uh, I don't know. Just just speed range, just different speed range, and then bigger circuit have a more, you know, the room for the mistake. Yeah. So uh, 
I don't feel any difference between uh, small, uh, small, small and narrow. narrow. Oh. Yeah. I see. Wow. That's mm -hmm. so different than <laughs> what we think. <laughs> I know. It's because he's more manly than I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. What is Hachiroku? Yeah. I, I'm going to pause everything because I need to ask the heavy hitting questions, the hard questions, Yoshi. Okay. I really right. want to answer for this. So when we were talking about you getting to drive with like Taniguchi and Imamura, mm -hmm. you know, those boys... I want to know, did they, were they nice to you? Were they friendly? Were they not approachable? Like, I, I want to know, you know, the, the personalities that you, you experienced with them on, on course, you know, when, not on course, but, you know, at the paddock and how mm -hmm. did you meet them? Were they friendly? T tell me what your, tell me what your experience was with them. Oh, they are very friendly. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I. Is there any yeah, that are I... mean? <laughs> oh, sometimes, yes, because uh, we are, you know, like a rival. Mm. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. Was there sometimes, any, any but... one person that was like, <laughs> I can't talk to that guy, I hate him? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yoshi's so nice. He's like, we're no, no, all no. friends, everyone's nice. No, no, we used to, uh, back in the day, the 2003, I, did, I didn't like a Yoichi. Because mm. oh. uh, he was like a uh, Tsuchiya's golden boy. Mm. <laughs> so I've never heard that one. <laughs> yeah, we didn't that, know that. That's why. That's why uh, I didn't like him. But now you know, I'm getting older, and if I see him, I maybe yeah, yeah, we can we can talk, of course, and yeah. then we can chat, and we can you know yeah, grab some lunch or something, yeah, you yeah. know yeah, yeah. Plus, that time only at that times. I, I didn't like, like, like a dislike, not so I hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hate uh, is a strong I mean, plus, he, plus, he's a Hachiroku me, driver. And yeah, he was a, people yeah. maybe always compare Hachiroku drivers, right? Yeah. And then also, maybe, you know, reasons why we dislike because I think we are all jealous of him mm. because he was the other golden boy. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What, what made him so, the golden boy? I don't know. Maybe his personality is pretty good, and then maybe he very formal to uh, the Keiichi, the Tuchir, mm. and then he visit to his office very often. I guess. Oh, um, I see. And um, yeah, very uh, frequent communication mm. he made with uh, the Tuchir. I think that's you know it's we all human, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was in option video a lot. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like they were trying to groom him to be a race car driver yeah. like they did Tanaguchi. Yeah. yeah. So he was a brown noser. That's what that is. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, but uh, I think Taniguchi was the other more golden boy than yeah. Imamura because yeah. Taniguchi got into the Super GT now. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. he was just yeah. like Keiichi, right? He was good. He was yeah. JGTC yeah. driver and drift guy, and he had a good personality yes. for video. Yes, but... Uh, I, I I can see Taniguchi's the selfishness, mm. but which which I think the other top driver needed. I think mm. so. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Taniguchi's the driving skill. Oh, it's it's like a doctor, you know. Yeah. Like a <laughs> yes. Nice. I I don't think I can be like that level. Yeah. So. But Yoshi, I think it's a different style. Yeah. Maybe not a different level, different style, I think it is. Yeah, yeah Yoshi's style is more manly style. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like I, that. I, 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 hope, I hope it's just a different style, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah he, he looks good like a mm. model. <laughs> <laughs> I, Yoshi, sure Yoshi is, uh, what, rate, please rate, please rate Taniguchi <laughs> from zero to 10. 10 is oh. super hot, zero is ugly. <laughs> I, <laughs> All right, so my rate is my rate. My rate for him is his like almost nine point five. Mm. Oh, nine point five, not ten though, not ten, just nine point five. Not ten. One thing because he doesn't have a children. Oh, I mean, child. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so I have two kids now, so yeah, yeah. I beat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're ten. Yeah. You're ten, Yoshi. <laughs> You're living the life. You're living the life, not him. No, I mean the the visual wise, his 
he's ten, and then maybe I'm a three or one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so well, I don't know I Yoshi so- because someone decided to marry you and have children with you. Yes. So yeah. obviously, you're more than a two or a three. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we did a joke. Uh, uh, joke about the Taniguchi, you know, that God gives him so many things. Mm. <laughs> I don't even get one. <laughs> <laughs> but God didn't give him children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big thing. So. Yeah. That's funny. But yeah. He, he never won a D1 round in a Hachiroku. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he didn't get that either. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But Tanigu- Taniguchi is the uh, first Hachiroku driver. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, the He's fr- pretty good. The f- uh, the f- what do you mean the first? I know he had I mean, a Hachiroku a really long time ago. There's footage yeah. of him drifting his Hachiroku. It was white, right? A white Hachiroku yes. in Toge. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. What? Yeah. Um. Oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, sorry. Are you starting your car? No, no, no. I tried to open the windows. It's oh, so it's hot. hot. It's hot. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm exciting now. That's yeah, yeah. You're, you're thinking about Taniguchi. You're getting all sweaty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My jealousy mindset came back. <laughs> jealousy mindset. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So let's go back to, um, let's go back to D1 and the high-speed okay. courses. So um, we noticed that you started getting a lot of success on the mm-hmm. super high speed courses. So mm-hmm. be- maybe before Autopolis and before um, some of these other really high speed tracks, um, you would always place, you would always get points. But mm-hmm. it was when you started driving the super high speed tracks is when you would get on the podium or you would get first place. What was it about those tracks that gave you the advantage to, to place so well? Uh oh, the bigger trucks. Let me stay in the full gas pedals all mm. the time, and I wasn't scared to you know step keeps the full gas pedal because it's so much escape zone. Mm. So if I made a mistake, I don't hit anything. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute, Yoshi. <laughs> Can you, you you see the car behind you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, this is it, yeah. This this car got a crash because uh blew up the other engine. Oh, on on the straight, so mm. I got locked out the rear wheel and engines. You know, like a con rod came out came oh. out from a block, so I had a, no control and just straight into the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the hundred hundred miles miles per hour. That's so, so crazy. Oh my god! I was like, oh no! Like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was the same round that you won later, right? Yes, correct. Oh my gosh! Two thousand five. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So like, uh, without without any car problems, then I don't think any concerns about. To make a damage or hit some walls or stuff. That's why I think, you know, I was able to pull off my uh, driving skill from, I mean, above 100% of the driving skill I, I could pull off from my from myself. Yeah. Anytime a Hachiroku driver does well, mm-hmm. we see how hard they need to drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see, you know, we see the the pedals all the way down um mm-hmm. and and they are they have to drive really really aggressive mm-hmm. so um yeah i i just want to read uh because i wrote down some stats um mm-hmm. of your successes in these high speed courses so in 2004 you got second mm-hmm. in autopolis and then in 2005 mm-hmm. you got first in autopolis and then tw- yeah. 2006 you got fourth at sugo Mm-hmm. And then uh, also in 2006, you got fifth at Suzuka and third mm-hmm. at Fuji. So these are mm-hmm. all really serious high-speed courses. Um, mm. And I, that's, I think that's just amazing that... Um, because, you, it, you know, in other courses, uh, or, you know, like we see in Formula D, um, there's high-speed courses. Or, but you mm-hmm. don't see Hachirokus anymore. 
and you don't see them find if they if you do see Hachirokus, they're not successful. So, yeah. So the fact that you are able to do so well in a Hachiroku at those high speed courses, it's mm-hmm. very, very um it's 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 amazing. It's it's mm-hmm. really cool to see that. Yeah. So you didn't feel like you never felt like you were at a disadvantage compared to some of these other cars with well, around, yeah. around 2006, they were getting to pretty high horsepower numbers, like 600, right? Yes, from the 2006. But uh, I don't think I feel any disadvantage from uh, those high-power vehicles until 2008. Mm. So I, I still remember 2008. I won the Formula Drift in Las Vegas. Yes. So I think that was the, the last year of the, the Hachiroku can, you know, be a competitive. Um, after that, after that, uh, I don't think it's competitive anymore. What changed to make it not competitive? Oh, the, the drivers and machine levels around the drifting field is so much mm. you know gain like tuning knowledge about the yeah. cars things like that yeah tuning so now now if you want to compete then i'll pick a mustang oh <laughs> competing in america you mean <laughs> oh Must- no even even, even, in japan? even japan oh my yeah, gosh i don't i don't want to pick a top charge the engine i want to have a na na lots of NA torque. Mustang, v8 mm. so very similar engine profile and the torque curve with an A car, yeah, but a little bit heavier and bigger. That's yeah, it. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I can. I don't know whether I can handle it or not. But uh, <laughs> I'll pick that one. Do you? When's the last time you drifted a car, Yoshi? Uh, drifting, you mean? Yeah. Two thousand four. That was the, the Apex, the SC four thirty. Wait, you've never drifted at all since two thousand four? No. Oh, last car was the other. You remember the like a Paul's Corolla in the final boat? Oh, I crashed. <laughs> <laughs> that that must be a hard car to drive. I can't. I he makes it look easy. It, it I don't believe that it's easy. Oh, that was in the, that was kind of in a hot 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 vehicle, but uh, that was awesome. So yeah, great. It was it was really cool seeing you jump in a car. Uh, yeah. Did how 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 uh, do you know the term rusty? Mm-hmm. Do you feel rusty when you were driving it? 2014, no. No, a little bit, because I just retired from uh, competitions. So now maybe, yes, I, I think. Yeah. It's amazing to me, Yoshi, because you are only um, three years older than me. Oh, really? Yeah. And so when I was when I was following D1 and I was falling in love with drifting, I was already like 21, I think. And, okay. And I, I just assumed everyone was older. To, oh. To have all of that experience to become a professional, I thought all the people that I was watching were just were much older than me. So it's kind of crazy to see um, someone who's been in drifting for so long and has such an amazing career that they're that you're only three years older than me. Yeah, I think that my age is my generation is uh, I think youngest generations of the. Tra- when the the drifting transitioning to uh, the race track, yeah. So younger than us is they started with a race truck, not a toge. Yes. So, so th- that's, that's a difference, I guess. I'm sure that helps them learn faster if they have a race truck and they don't have to learn. Yeah, of course, yes. Like a Daigo Saito is so crazy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you you know earlier you mentioned that you started with motorcycles. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's my observation that people that start with motorcycles or mm-hmm. motocross or, you know, mm-hmm. racing with motorcycles, they are so good at drifting. Did yeah, you, somehow. Did you feel like that gave you an advantage or helped you learn uh, early, faster? I don't know. I, I think only the thing I can think of is the motorcycle 
is more dangerous than the drifting.、Mm. So, drifting, when you hit the wall and you don't get injured,、yeah. but motorcycles, you must. Broken bone、oh. or something, right?、Yeah. So, so motorcycle people are crazier, or they <laughs> are just more, yeah, they, they're not afraid. Yeah. yeah, actually, I wanted to do a motorcycle stuff again. Uh oh, <laughs> again. Oh, your wife's gonna、yeah. love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, with、uh, maybe 50cc、mm. small motorcycle,、oh, mm. okay, that's you not know, that bad. On the small racetrack, not like high speed crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 just for fun. So, um. What is your favorite memory from, from、uh, driving in D1? Favorite memory? Hmm. Hmm.、Um, <laughs> it, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be about D1. Maybe just like maybe early drifting memories. What is your favorite early drifting memory?、Uh, I would say all of my、uh, drifting experience was my favorite. You know, I can't. You can't make pick a one. Yeah. But uh, uh, very interesting, interested the experience was, you know, drove over the Apex, the FDs on the Tokyo one day. That was in、yeah, 2005.、Mm-hmm. So my front tires the, rubbed with the Apex, the <laughs> rear tires, then the tires lift me up. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah that was a good experience. I was like,、oh, wow. Was that, that, that was more exciting than when you went over the barrier in Odaiba? <laughs> that, that was ex- a、yeah. <laughs> good experience, too.、Uh, yeah, so- I thought, yeah, I thought, oh, my drifting is over. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> then that night, you know, like a、uh, sport news, like、mm-hmm. a ESPN、yeah. in Japan. Uh, they featured on the, the drifting, and then I was in that show. So,、oh. all, my, all my sponsor was so excited. <laughs> because, <you> know, <laughs> the, the logo is、so、all over Japan.、So、yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is so crazy. <laughs> Yoshi, the whole time, I, I meant when you talked about the gangsters like coming to you, and you mentioned you had your girlfriend.、Um, so, did you have a girlfriend the whole time you were drifting and, and competing in D1? Oh,、uh, no. no. I. When I was in the Toge, then yeah, I had a girlfriend.、Uh-huh. Then when I started to the D1, and no, no girlfriend. No girlfriend. And then how did you I don't even your... have money for the girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I was going to say,、yeah. what does your girlfriend think? But I mean, how did you meet your wife now? Because I know she's from, she's from Japan, right? Yeah, she's from Japan, but、uh, I met her in California. Oh. oh. Were you clubbing、yeah. in Hollywood or something? Or? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just met her. She was my, uh, like, uh, the language、uh, the tutor. Oh,、okay. oh I see. So, and what does she think then, about your past? What? What does she think about、oh, your I, crazy past? I don't know. She, she likes to come watch the other、uh, Formula Drift.、Mm. So she came. Yeah. And then, then, yeah, that's how we start. I think that's a good test of a, of a good wife. It, they'll come and they'll support you and actually want to watch you and、uh, let you. I don't, I don't know. I、uh, think so. I think so. <laughs> I think it's very valuable to have the support of your wife, wouldn't you say? Yeah. <laughs> eh, that's what you said. I don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 I have a、uh, no one, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We talk about girls. He's like,、mm, I don't know. I don't know.、Um, so we're going we're gonna to start rounding out this episode, but I wanted to ask you、um, a couple questions at the end. And I think right now,、um, when you think about your, the drivers in, well, actually drifting in America versus drifting in Japan, can you tell me what you think about that? Like, what's the difference? We think we know, but we want to hear、uh-uh. from you.、Uh, the difference is I don't know. The American drivers have more skill than Japanese drivers. So I think it's, no, I mean, I think it's a culture wise, I guess, the Americans 
is, you know, have a big bowl like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're bold. Yes. And I mean, I mean, tough guy. The Japanese is, you know, like, oh, I think one, one thing difference is the Japanese drifters have a only one, one car, drift car for the, your commute commuter mm. so the americans they they have a competition car mm. and then their daily driver is different right yeah yeah so i think that's why like a conservative like the level is different yeah mm. so they don't they don't you know concerns about the daily drive so they just push more than us i see so that's why I didn't even think of it like that. Like, yeah, we don't uh, feel you're, that. You, you're blowing our mind today. <laughs> that's the difference. So. <laughs> yeah. What about like drifting I said, style? Like, oh, drifting style. Mm. Hmm. I don't know. Now it's all over the world the same to me. It, it is. I think the drifting style is, is uh, it's becoming like a global yeah. thing. And then first, first a couple of years of the the drifting scene in the U.S. is they just copy from Japanese, right? Yeah. Try to copy. That's my feel. Yeah, that's my feeling. Then, then after that, then start with their own, like a more close to the wall and right on the wall, mm. like that. That's what they created for their audience. You know, fans yeah. excited more than you know, like a. Japanese style. Well, Keiichi did that. Keiichi did that yeah, at Keiichi Irwindale. Did. Yeah, that's right. But uh, Americans with uh, V8 more like, you know, like a amazing engine sound than yeah. Corolla's like, uh, you know, Puppy versus, you know, like Lion. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, Yoshi, because it, from an American perspective, it's yeah. it's the other way. So oh, a, yeah. a lot of, uh, I mean, not all, not all Americans, but, um, but us, uh, yeah. yeah, like people like us who started around when we started, we really like, uh, the Japanese style and we want to hear, oh. we want to hear the, the NA Hachiroku or we want to hear an SR20 mm. DT. We don't want to hear a big V8, you know, it's, um, we root for the underdog. Yeah, we do. Uh, we you always we always root for the underdog in everything. But I see. Yeah, if anybody at this table got a V eight, they would not be able to sit at this table anymore. <laughs> like, no, not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think this is the this is the uh, things. You know, I think it's you know next next grass is always green. Yes, yes. I agree. You're right. Yes. So our hour is almost up. I've got one more question for oh. you. Um, can please name the your top five Hachiroku mm -hmm. drivers? Oh, top five Hachiroku drivers. I should say drifters. Right? I like uh, Hiroshi Takahashi. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like him. I, I put him on the champion. Oh, wow. he's number one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he's number one. Okay. And then second Corolla driver, I think Will. Mm -hmm. And third one, maybe Corolla. Hmm, mini Corolla driver. Mm. You can put yourself on there too if you want. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think Yoichi is third or fourth. Mm. Oh. And then I like Yamashita. Yes. Mm. So how many is that? That's four. four. That's four. Yeah. One more. Mm -hmm. Oh, back in the day, you you may not know the it's the team's names are Otokichi family. Uh, Maybe you don't know. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Maybe his name is Hirano. So Hirano. I like his driving style. Okay. Too. Well, uh, why did you pick Hiroshi Takahashi for number one? Why is he your favorite? Um, I like his uh, very aggressive driving style. Yes. And then his Hachiroku life yes. is amazing. Yes, you know? I agree. 
I, I love watching him on Instagram and he's working on his car with his kids or is, he's yeah, always right. working on it all the time. Yeah, always. It, yeah. And then his household car is only Corolla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daily yeah. driver Corolla to this. Yeah. Day. That's I, amazing. Even, even his wife just drives the Hachiroku every yeah, day. Yeah. I, I don't know. It. Yeah. I love it. Um, I love I love his Hachiroku life, but I also uh-huh. love that uh, I don't know how long has he been drifting for. Uh, what it's I don't know twenty five thirty years, years right maybe, and I yeah. I feel like all the super early drifting videos I've seen of him compared to now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he drives the same way. Yeah. So you know, same na na four age and mm-hmm. same. Uh, just uh, kind of old style drifting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like super, super aggressive, and you know, use like uh, inertia drifting, or um, mm-hmm. you know, he's not, he doesn't pull up, no e brake entry. Like, yeah, it's it's. I love it. It's like watching. It's like watching old drifting, but today. Mm-hmm. I I think that's really cool. Yeah. But so Yoshi, it's been an hour. It's been an hour. So I know you got to go back to work. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy life to do mm-hmm. this. You may be the earliest drifting guy that will ever be on this podcast, and okay. uh, it's such an honor that you're willing to do this. I know you're shy, and <laughs> uh, so being able to you know come on here and be recorded, I really appreciate you. Um, you are, uh, you helped pioneer drifting for the whole world. So you, I know you did in Japan, but you know, drifting came from Japan. So you kind of mm-hmm. helped pioneer it for the whole world. Yes. Um, and you helped bring drifting from Japan to the U.S. Mm-hmm. by, um, competing in Japan and then competing here. You found success mm-hmm. both, both places. So that is really cool. Um, and I'm proud to be able to, call you a person that uh, I look up to and I respect and you've been a hero of mine for so long to be able to call you a friend um, like mm-hmm. that's that's so great for me so thank you and um, I don't know if anyone's called you this but I think you are a drifting icon and oh, I yeah? think, <laughs> yes I for sure yeah. you are a drifting icon and um, you know just appreciate you being able to come on here and tell your stories for everyone to share uh, for everyone to hear and um you know uh you know when you package something to ship it to mm-hmm. protect it you uh you bubble wrap it mm-hmm. i think we should bubble wrap you <laughs> because you're so important and we want nothing bad to ever happen to you <laughs> oh thank you yeah. but uh, i'm i'm much appreciated having me in there you know this show is so so great to uh you know talking about my uh drifting history with you guys and yeah, I it wish was, we had more was, time. Was yeah. yeah, it was a good time. And then time is flying so quick. I know, I, <laughs> I know. Wish, yeah, I, I wish I could have more time. But, uh, well, one yeah. one day, Yoshi, when we're out in Michigan, or if you ever come back to California, I would love to spend more time with you. I want our kids to meet. Um, and I want to do like growing up man stuff with you. You know. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Maybe in 20 years, maybe. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Old man stuff, okay. Uh, yeah, after after I retire, I will buy the Corolla again. And <laughs> mm, okay, oh, good luck trying to find one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Yoshi, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> okay. And that wraps up this episode of the Salady Mania podcast. You can follow Yoshi on Instagram at ToshiKing86. And you can follow us on Instagram at Salady Mania. And visit our website, podcast.saladymania.com. And this episode is also on YouTube, so check us out there. And did you know that you can leave a message on our hotline? Leave us your questions or comments and tell us about the first time you fell in love with drifting. Leave your message or text to 323-607-6075. And guys, we'll see you in the next one.